Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Trilby and welcome to my reaction video to the 87th Academy Awards which uh, finished about half an hour ago. I'm recording this at around half past five in the morning because I'm, I'm from the UK so I had to stay up to watch it. The Oscars didn't start until about half past one in the morning UK time so I stayed up to watch it live um, because I'm in the UK. Um, I had to watch a live stream online. Thankfully, I was able to find one that actually lasted through most of it. I did find one um, at the beginning of the event, and as soon as J.K. Simmons was announced for Best Supporting Actor, it cut off due to a, due to a copyright claim. So I had to find another one, but thankfully I did. So I missed most of J.K. Simmons' speech, but I'll be sure to catch up. Um, but yeah, before I talk about uh, what, I, what I think of the uh, awards themselves and who won and who was deserving and things like that, I'm going to talk about the show itself. Now, I'm actually quite a big fan of Neil Patrick Harris. I think he is a, a really good actor, a great showman, great singer, um, but he bombed here. I really think he did. I don't blame him for it, uh, but I think that even bubble wrap isn't as safe as Neil Patrick Harris was during the Oscars this year. He played it so safe, so saccharine. It was... There was no edge, no edge at all to what to the material he was given, and if there was anything that seemed remotely sketchy uh, that that he said or did, you could tell it was improvised. You could tell Patrick Harris was trying to elevate the material, but this year's Oscars was where comedy went to die. The whole skit about what was in the box, his predictions, you you could tell from a mile off that was staged. Uh, him interacting with that woman in the audience, I she was from The Help, I've been told. Oh yeah, The Help movie, that that was a thing, wasn't it? Um, that bit was dead on arrival, so many of the gags. The Birdman skit, that didn't really work out well until Miles Teller showed up as the improvised jazz drummer. That was a legitimately great moment. Um, the bit where he was talking about the space fillers in the audience, that bit was only made by Steve Carell. You could tell that the writing, the, the material here was pretty terrible. I thought that Ellen DeGeneres did a good job last year, but that was very safe. I kind of have to take that back now because this was the epitome of safe. This was just a lifeless hosting job. And Neil Patrick Harris is such a great showman. He nails the Tony Awards when he hosts. He's he's a brilliant stage presence. But here it just didn't work. I, I I stand by the fact that Seth MacFarlane did a terrific job hosting the Oscars. He he had that edge, he had that humour, and he had that passion for the industry and for the show itself. And um, he really did bring some great things to it. Like the opening of his Oscars, uh, when he brought in all of those singing acts and things like that. He brought in William Shatner. Even the I Saw Your Boob song was really good, even though Chinese Whispers just enveloped that song to be... Uh, a faux controversy because people were saying it's a completely sexist song even though it was sort of it was laughing at the concept of the song and not being a uh, it was because Chinese whispers just ruined that um, segment of the Oscars and I'm very disappointed he had that whole sound of music skit he brought Ted onto the stage there was some great skits from Seth MacFarlane's um, hosting job but for this this there was hardly anything here um, and um, but apart from Neil Patrick Harris, the show itself I enjoyed. There were some great acceptance speeches. Um, Eddie Redmayne had a great speech. Uh, Julianne Moore. I missed most of J.K. Simmons, but I'll make sure to watch that because I'm hearing he was great. Um, Pat Patricia Arquette um, doing a rallying call for for equality um, for women was just. It was a big. It was very well deserved it was um, a great for her to use that 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 moment in the spotlight um graham moore's speech for best adapted screenplay um i'll talk more about whether or not i think he should have won later but that was a terrific speech and i think it was incredibly brave for him to come out the way he did saying that he i think he said when he was 16 years old he tried to commit suicide uh, i didn't I didn't really know much about Graham Moore, so I, I didn't know if he was um, if he was a gay writer or anything. I, clearly, he he re he um, relates to the material. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a great speech as well. What, what else did we have for speeches? Speeches. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was really funny how you had uh, actors uh, or the um, the crew members, the production team members, going over their speeches. They had the the moments where the orchestra kicked in to try and shoo them off the stage, but they kept talking anyway. Um, Powell, per, uh, let me pronounce this, Powell Poliowski, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm probably butchered that, um, how he just kept on going and he wouldn't stop. 
Um, I thought that was just terrific. That was just a great big F you to the Academy, which was awesome, I think. Um, but once that happened, the people giving speeches knew that the the orchestra was just an empty threat. Unlike a few years ago when Life of Pi won Best Visual Effects and, and the Academy didn't hesitate in cutting their mics when they went over. Um, of course, John Legend, John Legend and Commons' um, speech for Selma was uh, was probably the best speech of the night in my estimation. It was a terrific speech and that, sell, that whole Selma thing was just incredible um, the the glory song how they reenacted the Selma to Montgomery march on the stage that song was pretty much a protest a knowing protest for the whole Oscars so white thing but uh, we'll talk more about that later on uh, now let's get to the categories themselves uh, first up we had J.K. Simmons for um, best supporting actor uh, a very, very deserving win. Um, Robert Duvall for The Judge, Ethan Hawke for Boyhood, Edward Norton for Birdman, and Mark Ruffalo for Foxcatcher. Some very good nominees here. Um, so, uh, yeah, th- there was no contest here. I checked out the Vegas odds uh, before the Oscars started, and if you bet $5,000 on J.K. Simmons, you would get $1 back. It was pretty much a sure thing. Uh, same for Patricia Arquette, but we'll get to that later. Next up, um, the Grand Budapest Hotel for costume design this was also this wasn't unexpected uh, there were uh, there was also inherent vice into the woods maleficent and mr turner uh, although i think movies such as captain america the winter soldier or maybe guardians of the galaxy comic book films uh, should have been recognized as well because those had great designs as well but in terms of the nominees themselves i think grand budapest um, grand budapest hotel was the clear winner here in terms of um, uh, melina cananero's costumes they were they seem to be the only ones that were consciously thought out with the sets in mind with the props in mind they they were designed and colored in a specific way to sort of clash or complement the environments behind them it was incredibly well thought out and a very very deserving win um we also had uh, for makeup and hairstyling the grand budapest hotel again uh, fox catcher was a nominee as was guardians of the galaxy now i think that while there were some good moments of makeup in the grand budapest hotel guardians of the galaxy should have been the far and away winner here um it like the only note well not noteworthy the only um, out there explicit use of makeup in the grand budapest hotel was the old age makeup for some of the characters very good stuff very good especially for tildes winton for the guardians of the galaxy you had dave batista you had zoe saldana in full makeup for the entirety of the movie as well as um i can't remember his name but for for ronan uh, you had um, Karen Gillan in full makeup as well. Just terrific full body makeups. As well as all of those extras in the background. Like you look in the background of Nova Corps scenes. And you can see extras just fully decked out in makeup. Guardians of the Galaxy is the one that should have won this makeup award. But because it's a comic book movie of course that was not going to happen. Not to belittle Francis Hannon's and Mark Coulier's work on the Grand, on the Grand Budapest Hotel. I've met Mark Coulier. He's a terrific guy. He flirted with my girlfriend the fuck. But, but anyway um, great work there but Guardians of the Galaxy sh- should have been the one to win here. Um, the Oscar for Foreign Language Film um, went to uh, Ida. Um, unsurprisingly it was pretty much the um, far and away one. It was the only one nominated for other awards. Uh, it was also nominated for best cinematography um and yeah there was also Le- um, leviathan Tan- tangerines timbuktu and wild tales i've seen none of these films so i can't really comment because i'm in the uk you don't really get all of the you don't get these foreign language films uh, same for live action shorts uh, the phone call one matt kirkby and james lucas i really want to watch it you know because i've heard great things but i'm but in the uk th- these films they don't come to the UK, uh, so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and find some way to watch them and maybe review them on my website one day. Um, the Oscar for documentary short, uh, Crisis Hotline Veterans Press One. Uh, once again, I know no- nothing about these shorts because y- y- they're they're unaccessible in the UK. You can't watch these things. Uh, but Oscar for sound mixing, Whiplash. Now I am so glad. So glad that Whiplash won a sound award. Uh, Craig Mann, Ben Wilkins, and Thomas Curley did a phenomenal job here. The other nominees were American Sniper, Birdman, Interstellar, and Unbroken. Uh, Interstellar uh, was definitely another worthy nominee. Birdman as well. Uh, but American, I can't comment on Unbroken. I actually have yet to see Unbroken. But American Sniper that did not deserve any sound nominations, let alone sound awards, because it's completely on. It's it's exactly the same as. 
previous war movie, so it's not exactly pushing any boundaries. In fact, Saving Private Ryan's sound and many other um, war movie sound designs and sound mixing was so much better. But for um, um, Alan Robert Murray and Bob Asman to win Best Sound Editing for American Sniper, in, in my opinion, that was a joke. That was an absolute joke for American Sniper to win that. I, I'm not just saying that because I dislike the film. I'm open to... I, if American Sniper had been nominated for Best Makeup, I would have been, okay, well, you can have that one. You could, like, and, but sound editing, the movie had blatantly out of sync bullets. It had blatantly out of sync gunshots. In a war movie, when you have the muzzle flares and the muzzle flashes on screen from the weapons, how does that happen? Genuinely, how do you get out of sync bullets when the visual cues are on the screen for you? How does that happen? I'm sorry, but, American Sniper winning Best Sound Editing and being nominated for Sound Mixing is an absolute joke. But I'm so glad that Whiplash won Sound Mixing. It was a phenomenal film. And the sound and the editing, which it also won later on, more on that later, it, I'm just so glad it took home that award. Very well deserved. Uh, supporting actress, um, Patricia Arquette. Um, yeah, uh, once again, it, very much like J.K. Simmons, this was completely expected. Laura Dern, Kira Knightley, Emma Stone and Meryl Streep were very good. Um, and Patricia Arquette's speech once again was brilliant but I do think that really I think in a stronger year Meryl Streep and Laura Dern wouldn't have been here I think Keira Knightley was very good in the imitation game and Emma Stone was also great in Birdman and, and I'm sure that this will not be the last time that either of those two are nominated especially Emma Stone uh, but I think in terms of supporting female characters this was a weak year um, and as as referenced by the um, all of the eight best picture nominees being about male leads, you could make an argument for um, the theory of everything being about Jane Hawking, but Stephen Hawking is the one on all the posters. Eddie Redmayne was the one getting all of the Oscar talk, uh, so I'm not sure if, if that really counts. But you know, she dedicated 12 years of her life, Patricia Arquette. So you know, uh, once again, I think it was very well deserved. Um, Interstellar winning for best visual effects. Uh, once again, this was also a deserving one and a very good category. I would have been happy if um, Interstellar, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or Guardians of the Galaxy had taken this. Those are very deserving nominations. And Interstellar, all of its effects from its practical ones to its CGI were all incredibly brilliant. And Paul Franklin, Andrew Lockley, Ian Hunter and Scott Fisher's work is to be very highly commended. Although I'm wondering, what is Captain America the Winter Soldier doing here? And I'm not saying it had bad effects. I'm not saying it looked bad. It did look pretty darn good uh, if if captain america the winter soldier would have been nominated for anything in my estimation it would have been best editing and maybe best original score by henry jackman but for best visual effects it i don't think it did anything particularly noteworthy in a year where you also had um, godzilla or the hobbits the battle of the five armies it seems a bit strange to have captain america the winter soldier in such a very competitive category not saying it looked bad but you know perspective people um the oscar for animated short uh, feast the winner was the only one that I actually saw because it, play, it played before Big Hero 6 and it was a nice and charming short I liked it, it was well thought out I did like uh, the twist like the, the twist ending it had, I thought that was very cleverly done um, but it I don't know, it, there didn't seem to be much meat to it, there didn't seem it, it didn't hold a candle to Paperman uh, which I believe was um, the winner two years ago uh, Paperman was the um, short, uh, uh, the 3D, 2D hybrid film, with, which was gorgeous. That was a deserving winner and an incredible animated short. Feast, I think, doesn't hold a candle to that, but I can't really comment completely because I, hadn't, I haven't seen The Bigger Picture, The Dam Keeper, Me and My Molten, and A Single Life, which were the other films in the category. But if I do manage to see all of them, I'll try and review them all, maybe as a group on my website. Um, animated Feature. Now, obviously whoever won this was going to have a big asterisk next to their name it would be like winning a boxing heavyweight fight uh, it would be like winning that by forfeit there would need to be an asterisk next to that winner's name saying no you did not really win because you did not fight the champ you did not go head to head with the lego movie and if it was up to me the lego movie would have been nominated for best adapted screenplay and that's not a joke it was just incredibly well thought out uh, I've seen Big Hero 6, The Box Trolls, and How to Train Your Dragon 2. Song of the Sea and The Tale of the Princess Kaguya have not yet been released in the UK. Um, but Big Hero 6, while it was a charming and fun feature film, 
with great animation. Baymax was terrific, and it had a uh, it had a wonderful score by Henry Jackman. This was no contest. This should have gone to maybe How to Train Your Dragon Two or the Box Trolls, Big Hero Six. I'm surprised it made it as part of the discussion, and very much like Feast, it felt like that it only won because it had the Disney name on it. I'm looking forward to knowing what happens with next year's Oscars, because Pixar are bringing out two films by the time the Oscars roll by, uh, The Good Dinosaur and Inside Out, so I wonder if both of those get nominated. But Big Hero 6, I don't think it was a deserving winner. A very good film, and I'm very appreciative that a film with such a diverse main cast of characters in terms of gender and ethnicity did take the top spot. But in terms of quality, How to Train Your Dragon 2 should have got this, I think. Uh, although I would have been very happy if the Box Trolls won. But of course, the Lego movie should have been there. Uh, next up we have we have uh, production design um yeah once again uh, the grand budapest hotel uh, i'm i'm happy with this win uh, in terms of the other films in, in the category the imitation game interstellar into the woods and mr turner it probably was um, a surefire win although once again for something like guardians of the galaxy i think that should have been nominated as well <clears throat> once again um comic book movies this year have sort of been um, the the Academy refused to recognise the legitimate craft and effort that goes into translating such an outlandish comic book uh, sensibilities to the big screen and making them believable and compelling. Remember, in 2011, Thor did not get nominated for Best Production Design or Best Costumes, and Captain America The First Avenger did not get nominated for Best Makeup, despite, you know, the Red Skull, for God's sake, um, which, of course, is very disappointing. But, um, yeah, Best Production Design, I can't see anyone else winning this. Um, cinematography, Birdman for uh, Emmanuel Lebeski. Um, I'm so glad that Birdman won this. While I don't think it's a perfect film, uh, the cinematography is just terrific. And Emmanuel Lebeski is just a incredible uh, cinematographer. And um, I'm, I'm kind of... I think this is a more deserving win than last year's win for Gravity because that so much of that is reliant on computers and I, I was annoyed when Life of Pi won Best Cinematography over Roger Deakins' Skyfall uh, the year before because Life of Pi was mostly created on a computer. There's very little cinematography there, whereas with Birdman it's all camera movements. It's all done in camera for the most part and it was a very great achievement and I'm so happy that uh, that he did win the award. And once again, Roger Deakins is nominated for Unbroken and didn't win. Uh, and I think the biggest snub of all, of course, was Dick Poop, who didn't win for Mr. Turner, although that was a gorgeously shot film. Uh, next up, for the Oscar for Best Film Editing, Whiplash. I am, once again, I'm so glad this won. This, for me, was no contest. This was the clear winner in my eyes from the category. Uh, American Sniper, Boyhood, The Grand Budapest Hotel, and The Imitation Game. While I, I would have been reluctantly happy if William Goldenberg had won for the imitation game of course Tom Cross was the clear winner here just incredible an incredible job with the editing um so yeah that's really all that can be said there just watch one of those musical sequences and just the amount of footage the amount of takes and the fact that Whiplash was shot in 19 days that entire film 19 days is just I can't I can't even be begin to comprehend that accomplishment. Anyway, uh, the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature. Once again, I can't comment because these films don't get released in the UK, for crying out loud. Uh, was Citizen Four, uh, the only uh, female director to come onto the stage to win anything, um, was Laura Portraz. Um, and yeah, um, I'm hearing great things. It's got no UK release date on the horizon. Hopefully this will change. Um, due to its win uh, the least we can maybe hope for is a home media release um, and although I am disappointed that Life Itself the Roger Ebert documentary did not get a nomination that that was disappointing for me uh, Best Original Song um, this was once again another cut and dry one Glory was obviously going to win and of course the performance was great but everything is awesome uh, it was very I'm very happy to have seen that get nominated especially with Will Arnett showing up on stage as the actual Batman that was terrific um, yeah, best original song. Um, Everything is awesome. Grateful. I'm not gonna miss you. And Lost Stars. Uh, some very good songs. Um, I would have been happy if Immortals from Fallout Boy from Big Hero Six would have been on the list because I actually think that was a very good song. Very good lyrically as well. I think. But um, yeah, um, great nomination and a, a very great win. Um, and th the speech from Common uh, was just absolutely incredible. Um, what else? Uh, the original score. Um, I think I wanted um, Johan Johansson 
uh, to win this one for um, for the theory of everything. Um, although I am a mass fan of Alexander Desplat, for uh, who was nominated here for uh, the, the Imitation Game and the Grand Budapest Hotel, uh, he won for the Grand Budapest Hotel. Although I would have been happy with the Imitation Game because I think that was actually the superior score. Uh, once again, I would have been happy with Johan Johansson, Henry Jackman for. Um, for Captain America the Winter Soldier was also a terrific score as well and Henry Jackman for Big Hero 6 I just want Henry Jackman to receive a nomination for once for crying out loud but um, I think the best composer won but not for the best score Uh, I think Imitation Game I would have been happy with or The Theory of Everything so yeah best original screenplay for Birdman Uh, the other nominees were Boyhood Foxcatcher The Grand Budapest Hotel and Nightcrawler great to see Nightcrawler in there but um, I don't understand how Foxcatcher could be best or original screenplay. Not only was it based on a true-to-life story, but it was based on at least three books. It was based on three books written about the event. How the shit does that get to be best original screenplay? And the best adapted screenplay was Whiplash, which was was based off Damien Chazelle's short film. <clears throat> that, was, um, really, that was at Sundance the year before. But I honestly don't think that should count because that Whiplash film was to try and get investors for a feature length film and it was made by the same director, written by the same writer and still had J.K. Simmons. I, it's stupid, completely stupid. But yeah, Birdman, best original screenplay. Uh, very wordy but very well thought out with the exception of its takedown of, of superhero movies. It was It's incredibly uninformed and petty in that regard. But um, the dialogue was great for the most part and I think it, it was a worthy winner. Uh, next up, we have a uh, best adapted screenplay, Graham Moore for um, for the Imitation Game. Uh, many people considered this to be quite an upset, uh, but I honestly don't quite see how. Uh, because if you looked at the bookies and the and the Vegas odds and pretty much every every company taking bets for the Oscars, the Imitation Game was the clear favourite to win. Um, American Sniper, it was a joke that that thing got nominated. Inherent Vice, uh, The Theory of Everything and Whiplash. I was rooting for either The Theory of Everything or Whiplash, but once again, I did really like The Imitation Game. And I think it's great that Graham Moore's very first feature screenplay got him a nomination and a win. This was his first feature-length screenplay, and I think that's a terrific accomplishment. And it was the number one movie from Hollywood's Blacklist in 2000, 2011. For those of you who don't know, Hollywood's Blacklist is um, a big list of films that um, are considered the best unproduced scripts. And over the pa- and like over the past few years, uh, 16 films have been made from the Blacklist, and eight of them have gone on to... Um, it's either win or be nominated for best screenplay. Uh, either way, it's, it's um, a great talent pool. Uh, so yeah, um, I, I think a, a, a very good win. Uh, directing Alejandro Gonzalez in Uritu for Birdman. At this moment, I thought that if because he won Best Directing, I thought Boyhood would win Best Picture, so that the Academy could um, reward um, Boyhood and Birdman because it's always the narrative has been that it's a two horse race. Um, but yeah, um, his um, his competitors were Wes Anderson, Richard Linklater, Bennett Miller, and Morton Tilden. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Foxcatcher. I gave it a three-star review, and one reason and one reason for that was the direction. And as much as I love the Imitation Game, Morton Tilden didn't deserve to be here. I think you sh- you you could have lost Bennett Miller and Morton Tilden, and replaced them with Damien Chazelle for Whiplash, and um, Ava DuVernay for Selma. I think that would have been a great lineup for Best Director. Uh, but anyway, I think a a good win even though the the category itself was quite a bit questionable. Um, yeah, leading actor, Eddie Redmayne. I thought this would probably go to um, to Michael Keaton because the Academy love a comeback person and they um, they probably related more to the material of, of, of a, um, a washed-up actor. Um, but uh, Eddie Redmayne won and he gave a terrific speech. It was brilliant. Um, Bradley Cooper once again uh, and uh, Bradley Cooper and Steve Carell once again did not deserve to be here I would have been happy to see Ava DuVernay not Ava <laughs> what am I on about I'm tired I would have been happy to have seen David Ayelio and Jake Gyllenhaal in this category alongside Eddie Redmayne uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Michael Keaton I think that would have made um, a terrific acting race um, so yeah a, a very deserving win um, especially for such a transformative role and I can't wait to see what Eddie Redmayne does next uh, next up, leading actress Julianne Moore. This was once again a cut and dry thing. Uh, this was uh, this was obviously going to happen. Marion Co- um, Cotillard, Cotillard uh, Felicity Jones, Rosamund Pike, and Reese Witherspoon. Um, Still, Alice has not yet been released in the UK. It's not out for like another month or two, so I can't comment on that. 
but I would have been happy to have seen Felicity Jones take this because she makes the theory of everything um, and it was the movie really does hinge on her emotional performance um, if um, Eddie Redmayne portrayed the physical um, aspects of the film um, if, if he was the brains of the film uh, Felicity Jones was very much the heart of it uh, next up we have Best Picture the final one which went to Birdman I thought this would have gone to Boyhood because after all it took 12 years to make um, this year this year was weird because the Academy can have 10 films for Best Picture but they went for 8 if it was up to me I would have filled those two previous slots with um, with uh, Nightcrawler I'm talking about films that I think actually could have had a chance of being nominated uh, not ones that I personally would have done uh, Nightcrawler and um, let me think probably Gone Girl I would have liked to have seen Gone Girl but yeah Birdman I'm surprised it won because um, I thought they were going to reward Richard Linklater and Alejandro Gonzalez in Iritu because both of them were producers on their films as well which means they would have both got a trophy uh, but that didn't happen. In fact, Boyhood, despite it and Birdman being the two uh, front runners, Boyhood actually only got one Oscar, and uh, that was for uh, Best Supporting Actress. Uh, so that was actually quite a big surprise. Um, so, yeah, I think that um, the ceremony itself was mixed. Um, the actual scripted stuff was terrible, but the speeches and the songs were terrific, especially Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga absolutely destroyed it. She crushed it. And um, I think I'm a Lady Gaga apologist. Um, I think that when she actually tries, um, it's abs she just hits it out of the park. Songs like um, um, Do What You Want, um, I think that's what, what it's called, Do What You Want and um, and Edge of Glory are just terrific songs. Um, and it, they're just good goddamn pieces of music where she's completely throwing herself into the material. Um, but there's a lot of crap that she's just clearly selling out to do. Um, but when she tries and goes for it, my god, does she go for it, and she was terrific here. Um, anything that I missed? Anything that I missed? I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Um, so, yeah, um, what did you guys and girls, uh, think of the... Oh, no, the In Memoriam! In Memoriam! Yes, um, of course, um, um, it was a very sad, yes. Uh, I didn't even know that Samuel Goldwyn Jr. had passed away this um, this past year. Um, he passed away at the beginning of January 2015. Um, but of course, it was a terrible year in terms of people we lost. Uh, Mickey Rooney, Robin Williams, Bob Hoskins, um, Ellie Wallace, Miss, uh, Mr. Yopan, uh, Richard Attenborough. Just the, the list goes on and on and on. Um, and it was um, just it was a very sad year and of course it's just great for them to be remembered although I think the BAFTA in memoriam tribute was uh, infinitely superior because they had the edited clips they showed what these people did um, as opposed to just having um, their names and their title I think a fully edited in memoriam would be uh, a much better tribute as beautiful as those sketches were um, I think that a fully edited one would have been much much more effective in just conveying who these people were um, and also, they do this every single year. Why do they have to have a song afterwards where it's just focusing on the singer? Why can't the singer sing at the same time as the in memoriam? It's, it's it just takes up it just takes up time and it actually detracts from the uh, from the segment as a whole. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm actually going to um, put it to an end now. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you very much for uh, watching this video for listening to me ramble. If you want to know what I thought of the eight best picture nominees: uh, Birdman, American Sniper, Boyhood, Imitation Game, Selma, The Theory of Everything, and Whiplash, I posted a hour long video the other day um, where I reviewed all eight best picture nominees. So be sure to check that out if you want to know what I thought of them. Um, I think we can all agree that the biggest snub for Best Picture of all was Transformers Age of Extinction. I'm surprised that its um, Oscar campaign didn't quite pay off. But anyway, what did you guys and girls think of the uh, 87th Academy Awards? The ceremony or the wins or the losers or whatever, the speeches? Please let me know below. Um, that would be absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you very much for listening and I shall see you guys next time.